Are we even capable of being objective? Let me tell you some more about another study, Tabor and Lodge, on gun control. Prior attitude effect, that your prior attitudes affect your subsequent reasoning. But this was a study by, on gun control. People disagree a lot, not as much as you'd think, but a lot about gun control. Some people think that it's important for everybody to have as many guns as they want. Other people think it's important for the government to control and regulate guns so that people don't kill each other. So in this study, um, the first step, subjects came into the room and they filled out a survey about gun control. And the purpose of this was to figure out if they are pro-gun control or anti-gun control. Then they were given a list of arguments, both pro-gun control and anti-gun control. And they were asked to go through that list of arguments, being as fair-minded as they possibly could, so that they could explain this article to someone else. So it's an article that has pro arguments, con arguments. You're supposed to read the arguments, understand them, so you can present them to somebody else. Not convert someone else to your point of view, just tell them what the pro and con arguments are. You know what happened after people read that review? <laughs> you got more attitude polarization. People who came in a little bit gun control became stronger gun control proponents. People who came in a little anti-gun control left even stronger, more polarized gun control beliefs. People argued against the arguments that were inconsistent with their prior beliefs, and they spent more time denigrating or dismissing the arguments that were inconsistent with their beliefs, and they spent more time talking about how great the arguments were that were consistent with their beliefs. They accepted arguments that were consistent with their beliefs uncritically, no matter how stupid the argument was, if it was consistent with their beliefs, we absorb it like a sponge. If asked to find additional information, what do we do? We selectively search for information that confirms our original beliefs, even if what we're supposed to be doing is finding evidence for the other side's point of view. And at the end of doing all that, we're even more extreme in our beliefs than we started. It's the illusion of objectivity. It's not clear to me at all that we are capable of being objective. And for those of you who are planning on going into the legal field, when a judge asks a jury to be objective, can a jury actually do it? Not what these studies suggest. Here's another study asking the question, can we be objective? Is it possible to be objective? So what they did is they had students grade term papers. To find out whether we're capable of being objective, what these researchers did was to create two arguments about capital punishment, a pro-capital punishment essay and an anti-capital punishment essay. And they gave these essays, one of them, to subjects who came into the experiment, and the subjects were divided up into groups based on their prior beliefs about capital punishment. Were they pro-capital punishment? Were they anti-capital punishment? in an extreme way, in a moderate way. And they were asked to judge, evaluate, grade these essays as objectively as they could. The grades that were received are along the vertical axis. And the, the grading scheme was, how persuasive is this argument? If you were all the way up the top, the argument, the paper was extremely persuasive. Down on the bottom, the paper was extremely unpersuasive. Okay, the left side of the graph represents subjects who had pro-capital punishment beliefs at the start of the study. When they graded these pro and con essays, and again, all they're supposed to do is grade the persuasiveness of the essay. These pro-death penalty people rated the persuasiveness of the pro-death penalty essays much, much higher then they rated the persuasiveness of the anti-death penalty, the anti-capital punishment papers. How about the other side? Well, the students who were anti-capital punishment, 
they really liked and found the anti-capital punishment papers very persuasive and the pro-capital punishment essays to be terrible. Same essays are seen as fantastic or terrible depending on the beliefs of the greater. This suggests that we are not capable of being objective. You might say, okay, sure, students, maybe non-experts, whatever, but how about experts? Experts don't fall for this, right? Well, I'm going to tell you about some data that you need to pay a lot of attention to if you're writing a term paper right about now this semester. Imagine doing the same study that we just talked about, but now with people who are experts or non-experts on capital punishment and have them evaluate the persuasiveness of these articles. So imagine having professors who know all about death penalty, either pro or con, and maybe master's students who know a lot, but not as much as professors about capital punishment. Let's have them do the same thing. If you look at how likely experts and non-experts are to dismiss arguments as being poor or weak arguments, you will find that experts are even worse than non-experts. Experts are more likely to dismiss arguments that are inconsistent with their beliefs than non-experts. Now think about this when you're writing your term paper. Do you wanna write a term paper trying to make an argument that your professor won't like? Well, you can, but I hope you're not hoping for a great grade. Okay, why are things so bad now? We've had confirmation bias, attitude polarization, that's been around for a while. What's happening now? Well, now there are so many sources of information. We can pick are sources of information so that they only provide evidence, they only provide arguments, they only provide stories about things that we agree with or in a perspective that we agree with. So if I'm a leftist, I might get my news from MSNBC and I will never hear the arguments that conservatives make on the same topic. If I'm a conservative, I might watch Fox News and I'll never hear the arguments that the liberals would make. In other words, we're living in echo chambers. People are not even getting the opportunity to dismiss arguments that are inconsistent with their point of view because they're never even hearing, they're not even exposed to arguments that are inconsistent with their points of view. This obviously is going to exacerbate the confirmation bias. It's going to lead people to believe, like many people do now, that the other side is crazy, is immoral, is unimportant, because we have no idea what the other side even thinks anymore, because we only get our information from sources that spoon feed us what we already believe. This is not how a diverse society is supposed to work, right? A diverse society, you're supposed to understand and recognize somebody else's point of view. You don't have to agree with it, but at least understand how they came to that perspective. But we don't even do that anymore. 